let me begin by uh, taking you back a little bit and then bringing you to where we need to go from here. You all remember we're talking about the operation of the anointing. We're not discussing the anointing itself. We're discussing the operation of the anointing. The anointing of the Spirit is the fruit of God's glory. God's glory is the source. God's power is the fruit that is the result of the glory. The glory of God produces the power of God. So whenever we seek the power, we must understand the source of it. Now, when we talk about the glory, we talk about the presence. So whenever you hear me say presence, I'm saying glory. Whenever I say glory, I also mean person, the person of God. Whenever I say the person or the glory or the presence, I also say attributes, who God is. Now, the power of God and the glory of, of God, even though they're united because the, the glory of God results in the power of God, the power of God is the fruit of His glory, yet their functions are different. The function of God's glory changes your life, while God's power changes your behavior, your actions. God's glory or presence or person or attributes change me, while the power of God will use me to affect others. So you've got God's presence changing your heart. You've got God's power changing the way you talk, the way you say things, the way you behave, the way you act, even the way you feel is affected by God's power. That's why the scripture says, and the Spirit of God shall come upon thee, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Samuel said to Saul, we'll look at that in just a second. And that's why it also says, and the Spirit of God came upon Gideon, and the result was he became a mighty man of war. And the Spirit of God came upon David. Same thing happened. Uh, don't worry that Suzanne came in. I'm teaching. Thank you. I didn't think she was coming, but I'm glad she did. She's my baby. Anyways, God's power came upon Gideon, changing his actions. He said, who am I? Who's my father's house? But the power of God changed all that, and he became a mighty man of war. Same thing with David. Same thing with anyone that experienced God's power. Now, the power of God comes for a reason and a season. While God's glory is an abiding glory. Never forget that. God's glory that changes my heart is an abiding glory. God's power that changes my actions and behavior is seasonal. It doesn't always, it, it, it's not going to be it's not going to be on you 24 hours a day. Because God's power comes for reasons and for seasons. And so the Lord said, The Spirit, the glory, shall be with you, shall be in you. Remember that. So before salvation, God's presence, again, God's glory, convicted you. When, when we say glory, we, we, we're not talking about some mystical something. God's glory is His own person. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of glory. Jesus Christ is the glory of God. Remember when, when Stephen was being stoned, he said, I saw the glory of God. Who did he see? He, he saw the Lord Himself. We, we, we read in Romans, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Who is the, the glory of God? Is Christ Jesus. He is the express image of His glory. So when, when I say the glory of God, I mean God. 
So who is the glory? God is the glory. His son Jesus is the glory. The Holy Ghost is the glory. The glory of God is his person. So now, the glory of God is an abiding presence, an abiding glory. It never leaves you. In fact, before salvation, he was with you. Keep that window open, please. He was with you before salvation, convicting you. At salvation, he came in. God's presence, God's glory, God's person came, came in. Now, something happens after salvation, which we've discussed every Monday, and, and I've got to rehearse it because it's got to get into your heart. Acts 1.8 says, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall receive power. You receive the result of the glory. You receive the anointing, same as the power. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now notice there, the Lord uses the word upon rather than with or in. He's with before salvation. He's in at salvation. He's upon after salvation. That's what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now people have confused the baptism of the Spirit with the baptism in the Spirit. We'll talk about that some other time, but I gotta just say it here. You are filled immediately at salvation. No person can be born again without the Holy Spirit. He breathed and said, receive the Holy Ghost. At that moment, they were saved. Later, he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem till ye be endued with power. They were already filled with the Holy Spirit, waiting for the power in the upper room. That's the part we nobody, nobody thinks about. But it's true. The 120 in the upper room were saved. Therefore, they were filled with the Spirit. Because before Jesus ascended, He said, Receive the Holy Spirit. When did He say that? After His resurrection, before His ascension. He breathed upon them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. At that moment, they were saved. Then he said, now, tarry, wait in Jerusalem till ye be endued with power. He didn't say, wait till you be filled with the Spirit. He said, wait till you be endued with power. They were sitting in the upper room when suddenly a mighty noise, a mighty wind rushed in. Tongues as of Fire appeared on their heads. They began to speak with other tongues. They went out and did what? Preached the gospel. That was power. We call that the baptism of the Spirit. But we've got to understand the baptism of the Spirit is the coming of the anointing and the power of God. Every Christian is filled with the Spirit, whether they are Baptist, Lutheran, Catholic, Methodist, whatever. Every believer is filled with the... You could not belong to Him without being filled with the Spirit. So I am talking here about the power that comes for service. We call that the anointing. So we got to understand, I am not talking about the Holy Spirit filling your heart and life, which takes place at salvation. I'm talking about the power that comes upon, 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 upon you for service. Now I'm repeating things because I, I believe that some of you are not grabbing it as quickly as I'm saying it. So I may have to say it a little more for people because you, 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 some of you are not accustomed to hear this. So, is this clear? Yes. Marvelous. We can go on now. 
Now, the power of God, the anointing of God, is available to every believer, not unbeliever. Every believer. And it comes for a reason and a season. Uh, last week, I, I, I discussed much about the power of God, and I want to go back and, and, and kind of hit on the, on the headlines real rapidly and then move on. 